Well, today we are very blessed. Uh, one of the most talented musicians in jazz in the world. A friend of mine for 12 years now, Dave. I mean, please, I mean, give me a break. His new uh, release is called Golden Hour, and you can get that. And he has been nominated for nine Grammys. And he does jazz cruises with all their jazz greats. I think you have two in May. We do. And if you're interested in any of this, you can look down in the description below and I will have a link to his site and you can get all the information you need. And he's famous for doing summer tours and holiday tours and packing them in. But I think he's most famous for uh, what Dr. King would call a graceful heart mm -hmm. and filled with love, compassion, and uh, empathy for others suffering that is just uh, remarkable, uh, just remarkable. And, and I have had great admiration and, and I adore you for that love. And Dave, uh, I wanted to talk to you today. Uh, you know, I was reading up on John Kennedy the other day and he said, uh, you must never forget that art is not a form of propaganda, but it is a form of truth as the artist sees it. And that we, in a democratic society, the highest duty of an artist is to be true to themselves, no matter what the consequences. And we have seen in this horrendous, uh, atrocious war in Ukraine, uh, not only the nobility of the Ukraine people, but artists around the world responding to, like I haven't seen since 9-11. It seems that every concert, every church, every institution, every opera, orchestra uh, has taken a moment in their business to salute the people of Ukraine with music and art and words. How do you view the role of art in, the, in these difficult times with COVID and, and the war in Ukraine and the locusts who I'm sure are coming? <laughs> First of all, uh, David, thank you so much for having me on this show. And you know, Big Daddy, you are a huge influence on my life and so many thousands and perhaps millions of people who who owe a debt of gratitude to you for the courage that you have shown in your life and your life's work. So a big thank you to you for thank you. the joy that you've brought to my life. And to answer your question, uh, I mean, look at how we met. We met when I finally came out publicly. Uh, it was uh, around when I was 40 years old, and uh, it's quite a long time now. Uh, but one of the very first messages that I got was from you, uh, this icon of the gay world, all of a sudden coming to me and saying, "You know, your music helped me through a really rough time in my life." Which, Lucky by the your album "Lucky Man," I would play. Yeah, it was 1993. You were in the thick of it in 1993. <laughs> And to know that, that my music had had some sort of calming and cooling effect on all the chaos that was going on in your life at that time, I think for any artist, that is the, the, the truest form of uh, compliment, uh, where your, your music, because we make music, in my case, I'm a saxophone player, I make records, I do concerts and stuff, and we put our notes out to the world, but we don't know necessarily how those notes are going to affect people and how they're going to find or worm their way into the cockles of somebody's soul to help ease whatever pain they're going through. And uh, I think that for me, the best way that I could describe uh, art in life, music in, personally for me, is as if you poured a pitcher of water on a sidewalk. Now the water, knows exactly where to go into all those little nooks and crannies. Uh, it just knows intuitively. And that's the way I feel about music. Music has that way more than words, more than any other medium for me at least. And of course I'm a musician, but all art in general has that ability to find its way to where it's needed most. And I think without it, we'd be in a very dark place. Imagine a world, if you can, one day or even an hour where there's no music. Music is just around us and it is a hugely calming effect. 
people have talked about uh, the pandemic and the fact that there were no concerts and no uh, live music where people could commune together and, and share in that experience, which we've all come to know as a, as a common experience. Even if you're not going to a big concert hall or whatever, it's just like seeing music and, and how music can be a bridge to bring people together. And we didn't have that in COVID, uh, especially that first summer of 2020. And I think that's one of the reasons why we had a lot more darkness that was going on around us and a lot of conflict and a lot of people like this because we didn't have the, the bridge of music. So, sorry, long-winded answer. To no, just... it's, it's beautiful. I mean, President Zelensky, who is a new hero to me, uh, one of those people like Churchill or Mandela who comes out of nowhere to become unforgettable in his courage and his bravery. He did a little video to thank the artists because he said it, it, as much as the uh, providing of the ammunition and the plane, not the planes, but the ammunition and the missiles and stuff, he said to hear the music, the voices from around the world, uh, the sound of instruments, the sound of voices, the sound of uh, you know people creating is every bit as important to their validation of their struggle as ammunition. Wow! It inspires them, and they 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 play the tributes from around the world uh, to the troops, and they now can hear us supporting them. And so, uh, yes, you. You got me through a, a, a very dark time, and I would put on my headset and listen to Lucky Man and remind myself that I'm a lucky man. So it goes from both the individual to here we are on the verge of who knows what with the war in Ukraine and where it will go. But what we are being taught by the people of Ukraine is courage and bravery, and uh, and, mm -hmm. and they have inspired us all. And what moments in your life? Has your music been a refuge for you? Well, it's been in the last couple of years, it certainly has been my go to. Um, when I'm feeling down, uh, I go to my feel good musical heroes that no matter what, they're going to pick me up. I just want to say, too, about the U Ukrainian conflict. He that story of Zelensky is an amazing thing, given. First of all, he's only 40 years old and oh, his that yeah. I mean, it's just an amazing thing when you think of where he came from and now what he's doing and the role that he is playing in inspiring the world to stand up. It's pretty amazing. As uh, a person of 100% Ukrainian blood, David, really? my, my grandparents, both sides, all of them were born in the Ukraine. Oh, half no idea, David. Kiev. Uh, one half and the other half from Odessa. So you're looking at somebody that has 100% Ukrainian blood in them. Uh, and so this is a personal thing for me too, uh, beyond just the political thing and the, the tragedy of this. Uh, the you see artists eventually going to like Poland and Hungary or Romania and putting on shows for the refugees or the wounded? Yes, I absolutely can. I mean, this is the role of an artist in these times is to dig deep. It's like, for example, in the pandemic, you, you talk about the healing power of music. Do you remember all those videos of people with pots and pans, and then some people would come out with saxophones or violins from their stoop in New York City, and then you'd see all these things. A, a friend of mine had a, a, a Friday concert where he'd wheel his piano out to his garage, outside of his garage on his carport, and then the entire uh, uh, block was involved in that eventually. It's like that the music, the ability for artists to show up to provide that uh, it's hard to, it's just like a foundational support that we need sometimes. So I could totally see, I've played in, in Kiev, uh, I, I, such a beautiful country and such beautiful people. Um, you know, I would absolutely. I would was, that that place is, is, is ruins now. Well, it's just, it hurts me hard to think about that because Kiev is, as a city is gorgeous, leafy, gorgeous, beautiful, filled with wonderful people. It's very European. It's a very European city. And to think that that, you know, not just that city, but all over that country has been decimated. And to see some have relatives over there, Dave? I'm sure that there are some, uh, but most of my relatives all emigrated uh, in the, at the turn of the uh, the 1900s to Canada. So my parents were born and raised in Winnipeg, 
And so all of my relatives that we can keep track of are in Canada. But I imagine that there's some, some that are still there. We do small things. I have yellow and blue flowers behind me uh, for this interview. Uh, Dave, we keep it brief, but I know you want to just take a moment and send your personal wishes to the freedom fighters of Ukraine and thank them for their bravery, for inspiring us all and reminding us that each of us can make a difference. So take it away. Well, I, uh, at your suggestion and your inspiration, I did find the music. Now, I don't know it yet, but I did find the music earlier today, knowing that we were going to talk of the Ukrainian national anthem. So I'm going to play it right now on saxophone, and I'm going to read it. So I hope I don't screw it up. Okay, Dave? Okay. Thank you, David. Here we go. <laughs> interview. We are so grateful.